Here I'd like to show you an example of using the darken blend mode to correct a fairly common problem when taking pictures, especially with digital cameras that use JPEG compression. What I'd like to do is select the zoom tool, and with the zoom tool, I'd like you to zoom in to the top portion of this image. Now I'm working with a document called Bryce underscore Canyon dot PSD, which is available in your resources folder. If you go ahead and zoom in to the top portion of these mountains or cliffs or whatever you want to call them, you can see that there's a haloing effect. And that haloing effect occurs when you have a sharp transition between two color values. In this case, we have the foreground object, which is the light tan color of the canyon and the light blue color of the sky. Well, there's a harsh haloing effect around this object. Photoshop just wasn't able to create a smooth transition between the two different colors. And what we want to do is we want to use one of our blending modes to achieve that. And so the darken blend mode in this particular example is going to work out perfectly. What I'd like you to do is create a new layer. I'm going to go ahead and pull up the application window just a bit so I can see the entire layers panel. Here on the Mac, I'm just going to click this plus sign, which kind of resets everything to fit within the active window. So now that I can see my layers panel, what I want you to do is hold down the Option key on the Mac, would be Alt on Windows to create a new layer. What that does, of course, is it opens up a dialog box, giving you the opportunity to name it. I'm not overly concerned about the name of it. I'm going to go ahead and call it Blend. More importantly, what I care about is the mode, the blending mode. Notice we can set that right here within this dialog box. So in the drop-down menu where it says Mode, go ahead and select the Darken Blend Mode. With that option selected, go ahead and click OK. And once you click OK, what we want to do is we want to paint this haloing effect with a darker color. So in this case, that darker color would be the color of the sky. Now because the blending mode is set to darken, we really won't harm any other pixels that we don't want to inside this canyon if we're careful. So let's go ahead and select the brush tool. B is the keyboard shortcut, and right now my brush size is enormous. I'm going to scale it down a little bit by using the bracket key on the keyboard. And you want to make sure that your opacity is set to 100%. I'll go ahead and drag that slider to 100%. I'm also going to set my flow to 100%. And what we want to do now is sample a darker color than the haloing effect that we're seeing. So we basically want to select the color value of the sky. To do that, you can hold down the Alt key or the Option key on the Mac to activate the eyedropper tool temporarily, and then click in the sky to sample that blue color. Notice the foreground color now matches the sky color. Then you just have to take some time and just paint over that haloing effect. And if you're, like I said, you're pretty careful, you'll have a hard time harming the actual canyon. You can just click and drag around the edge of the canyon, slowly removing that haloing effect. And you can really see a big difference here that's happening. And you want to make sure, of course, that you're painting on this blend layer. So this is a very quick and easy solution to common problems when taking photographs, especially with digital cameras that use JPEG compression. So you are able to easily remove that halo by creating a new layer and setting its blend mode to darken as long as you are painting with a darker color than that haloing effect that you are seeing.